I'm not here to murder. Bend the knee and join me. Or refuse and die. You need to find a way to make her listen. Whatever stands in our way, we will defeat it. Bran saw the Night King and his army marching towards Eastwatch. Bad things are coming. What's going on guys, Carmine here, and damn, I'm, I'm still reeling from that cliffhanger, and if there are any Jamie fans in the audience, I feel for you. But according to the preview for episode 5, Dany is just getting started on her conquest, and we also have some interesting developments in her camp. The preview for the 5th episode makes it look like the game is about to get more complicated. Also, before we get started, keep in mind that my review is already out, so definitely consider checking that out when you can. But let's get to it. Also, before we begin, a big shout out from Quid for sponsoring this video. From thousands of stickers, collectible cards, and toys from all your favorite shows, Quid is the best app for the inner collector in all of us, or those who want to spice up their phones. From Rick and Morty to Game of Thrones, Quid offers a fun way to interact with all your friends. It's out now for both Android and Apple devices, so head on over there and download it today. Link below and in the description. Okay, so first we get the surviving Lannister forces from the Field of Fire battle. Everybody is covered in ash and dirt, and they all come to her, probably amazed at her dragon, and listen as she gives her speech. She's not here to murder, even though she and her dragon killed more people in one minute than all of them combined. She's just here to bring peace and prosperity to the Westeros. So, you know, bend the knee or die. Yeah, there, there's this new thing coming out of Danny that is going to split the audience, but in a good way. From the look on Tyrion's face in the preview, it appears like there will be some conflicting ideas on how to rein her in, and whether or not she's behaving like her father. There has also been a long discussion throughout the fandom about whether or not Danny has inherited that infamous Targaryen madness. In the books, Barristan Selmy says how every time a Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin in the air, and the whole world holds its breath to see how it will land, meaning that many of her ancestors have been crazy before, and maybe she's gotten a bit of that too. Her father didn't go insane until old age, so maybe it's only a matter of time. I will admit, I do like the idea of her going crazy, but to randomly spring it on like that would be dumb. If they built it up from the beginning, then maybe. From the look of the preview, they're clearly going for Tyrion to be all, she's out of control and won't listen to me, which is funny because he's the one whose strategy fucked her over in the beginning, so Tyrion should really shut the hell up and let her do her thing. What's worse is that Varys is getting in on the whole, you need to find a way to make her listen, shtick. Once again, I don't blame Danny here for going all out and taking out the Lannister forces. Listening to you guys got her to lose all her allies and a good chunk of her army. She's pissed, and I would be too. This is one of the few times I've sided with Danny against everyone else. But I will say I do find it funny how Varys, of all people, the guy who knows everything, didn't foresee her going a bit AWOL. And in all honesty, I'm actually surprised she left any survivors at all, but it's also a weird strategy that can sometimes mess you up beat up your enemy so bad, and then offer him a helping hand and the chance to join you. The whole or die part is not kosher at all, but hey, what are you gonna do? She has dragons. Next up, we get what looks like Danny returning to Dragonstone, where Jon sees the dragon, Drogon, up close as it comes to him, looking like it's going to attack him. By now, even if you haven't read any of the Game of Thrones source material or books or whatever, you're probably thinking that a dragon will be cool with Jon since he has, secretly, Targaryen blood. You may be right, and it wouldn't surprise me if they go with that whole thing. Episode 4 had a really weird scene in the cave where they're trying to plant the seeds of romance in these two, and they didn't really make it that subtle at all, and maybe Drogon being all friendly with Jon will help that along. As cliche and predictable as it is, it definitely sounds like something this show would do. We also get a brief scene with Cersei and Kyburn. She's remaining defiant as ever, and Kyburn possibly just gave her the bad news that Jaime was likely lost in the Field of Fire battle. Episode 5 will be interesting, especially for Cersei, who has been winning left and right and making promises to the Iron Bank. Losing Jaime and her army and her money will really give her the ultimate test, but I, but it does make you wonder, what would have happened had Danny just attacked King's Landing with all three of her dragons in the first place? Would they have been as prepared, or would have it gone as well as the battle of this episode? I can only wonder if now Cersei will have Kyburn work on some new anti-dragon weapon, maybe attach it to some jars of wildfire, or maybe a net. Next, we get Jon, Danny, Davos, and Varys planning out where to go next with the White Walker situation. According to Jon, Bran saw the Night King's army marching towards Eastwatch by the sea. So now we know that Winterfell has sent a message to Jon, letting him know that Bran has returned and that he has seen the Night King's army, and it's coming. This is something that I would have liked to see in person between Jon and Bran, like them together in person. Their discussion about the White Walkers and how to defeat them, I'm sure Bran has more information that he could give to Jon about it, where they come from, 
from, who they are, and what they could possibly want, which is still a big mystery. In seven seasons, we still don't know why they're on the move and out to kill humanity. Last season, we saw that the Children of the Forest created them to help out in the war against the First Men. My theory is that the White Walkers went out of control and decided to wipe them all out, not just the opposition. Kind of like the machines in the Terminator franchise or the Matrix, being created for one purpose and then turning on their masters. We also get a brief look at Bran warging into some ravens, because of course, and we also get a look at the Night King's army, and it is massive. All three dragons will be needed to take them all down, because there is no way a ground war will be able to take them all down. Also, if you look close, you can almost make out the White Walker commanders on the hill overlooking troop movement. Like I said before, now that Bran is no longer Bran, and is actually Professor X minus the personality, his main focus in the story is to provide info, visions to the audience, of course, and troop movement for the army of the living, you know, information. They say the Night King will somehow awaken a dead dragon inside the wall, or that that's the theory anyway, and I wonder if Bran would be able to warg into that white dragon. Maybe control it long enough for someone to take it down. Some people think that the Night King will get his hands on a dragon before the season ends, but we'll just have to see. But guys, that is all for right now. Leave your thoughts below, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, and be sure to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Baba Booey.